This week on Pole House Bike Pot Weekend Getaways, we're at a conservation area. We're going to tell you all about it. What's on the menu? We're doing a sausage and butternut medley for the fall. So stick around. This is Wade and I'm Angel and this is Iris and we are Pole House Black Pots Weekend Getaways where we show you all things yummy to cook in cast iron as we visit different places. Well, it's Friday evening and I just got off work, got here and Oh, Iris says hi, don't you, baby? Yeah. She's excited to see her daddy, so she's a little noisy. But anyway, we have got all set up here last night, and it was got dark by the time we got set up, so we didn't get any footage. But uh, like I say, we're here at Harriman Hill, and I don't think there's a... Um, I think the hill is actually, we're at the bottom of the hill because we're right along the Lamine River. And if you head out, which is right out that way, <clears throat> head up the hill, there's a, the highway. And then you turn left and you go up a pretty good hill. And I would guess that that's probably Harriman Hill. But I don't know, named after somebody I'm presuming, but I don't know who. But this is a pretty nice uh, area, <clears throat> conservation area, of course, here in Missouri. and. One of the things that we really like about this is it actually has individual campsites. Uh, there's seven of them total, gravel pads. There's no tables or anything, but, and not all of them even have a uh, fire range, but some of them do, the one we're at does. And uh, let's see, we're, this is where we kind of come in where the campground area starts and there's a nice big parking lot for more camping or for your boat ramp <clears throat> really nice concrete boat ramp down here that goes down to the Lamine River and then there's also a nice at the entrance at the entrance that is there's a real nice vault toilet here but there's no other running water or electricity so this is all basically boondocking one of the only drawbacks at this area here is you can see kind of looks like it's far away but it's not that far is the i-70 so it's a little noisy but one nice aspect if you happen to be traveling through missouri it's uh it's a couple miles off of the nearest exit but it uh is real quick pull off stop for the evening where uh, you're traveling through and not far to get off and get right back on I-70 and keep on heading east or west. So it'd be a good spot if you're traveling through to stop in for a free boondocking camp spot. Missouri doesn't have BLM land, but they do have some national forest and most importantly, conservation areas. There is over 3,000 public lands it, that conservation department takes care of and they're called conservation areas. Of those 3,000 conservation areas, there's about 300 where you can spend nights and camp at, but only 200 of them are close to a parking area or have individual camping spots. Missouri is very fortunate to have a mobile app called Mo Outdoors. In this app, you can not only research where you want to go for your conservation area, but you can also find out what there is to do. These conservation areas are all over the state and provide the traveler with wonderful places to stay that are not Walmart parking lots or Cracker Barrel. Hello. Welcome back, or welcome if you never have watched this before here at 
whole house about pop we can get away. As we get into this, the first thing I want to say is I'm down to only one cast. This is yeah. just a brace. Doing great. It turns out this one was not fractured, which is wonderful in some respects, but they say my bones are bruised and could take up to six months to heal. So whatever it's worth, I get out of this in the middle of the month. So but anyway, this weekend we're at Harriman Hill Conservation Area here in Missouri, right in the center part of the state, right along Interstate 70. So it's a real nice stopover for a traveling crew. But so we're gonna. It uh, is a good yeah. spot. There's uh, what seven or eight seven spots. spots. Yeah. Seven spots. Seven. Yep. And it's uh, Blackwater is the exit that's easiest to take, and then M. Yeah, or come in the other way towards Boonville, which is a pilot grove exit. This is so. one that Google will get you to. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, but anyway, we're going to, it's Friday evening. We actually came yesterday, and it's getting dark that time of the year. It's uh -huh. October. So we're going to uh, go ahead and regroup here in a second and come back because in this video, what are we going to fix? Well, we're fixing a butternut medley, right? That's right. So nice fall dish for October. So, so we're going to get things around and we'll get back at you. Okay, time to assemble our sausage butternut meddling. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of butter and oil. Regular vegetable oil. You might want to say where we got this from because he watches us. Yeah, Jeff McBride, a friend of ours. We've done a lot of Dutch oven cooking with him and his wife on it. And they uh, used to do a lot of Dutch oven gatherings called dogs. And uh, this is one of the dishes that they did one time for one of them. Now we minutes. made it our own because he didn't put sausage in Yeah, it. if you leave the sausage out and watch what you're putting in, you can very easily make this a vegetarian or even a vegan dish. And uh, So in other words, no butter. Yeah, or a side dish if you leave the meat out too. So it would work either way. Okay, so... As that's cooking, we're going to add smally diced onion. That way Angel can't find them. They'll, yeah. get, they'll get cooked up and they'll cook down and get pretty sweet. And the next thing is, of course, butternut squash. You've got it diced up fairly small, as you can see here. Yes, and I'll tell you, butternut's not an easy thing to no, cut No, it's very much a pain. Uh, one thing that's really nice, and a lot of your bigger, a lot of your bigger grocery stores have it, is butternut that's already been diced up for you. So it's probably worth the money, especially if you have trouble, or if you're like Angel right now, where you haven't, uh, you can't really use all your muscles, you got a messed up wrist or, your or something. Hand. Yeah. <laughs> So that would be something that would really be good to uh, get it all ready for the dice. Okay, so now as that's cooking, we've got some salt and pepper. We're going to use a little bit of seasoned salt because that's what we like. If you don't like it, you can use plain old salt and pepper. Now we're not going to do a lot, but we're going to do some because the sausage is pretty salty. This is this pepper shaker that comes out prolifically, so I have to watch what I'm doing here. Yeah, if you don't believe him, watch the uh, egg roll recipe. And he's good. He don't spill or dump the whole thing in like I do. Okay, so what we're doing here is basically kind of a, almost, almost like, it could be like a stir fry if you wanted to, but not really stir fry, but like most things because these uh, butternut are pretty tough when they take a little bit to cook. So we'll probably have to put the lid on here a few minutes and let them cook. But I think we want to go ahead and add the sausage. I would, so flavor it. Go in the flavor. It We're either. using some diced up kielbasa. You can use whatever kind of smoked sausage you like. And this is like really smoky. Tastes good too. I've got some. So you can do whatever proportions you want. We just kind of measure it out. One we, butternut, one medium onion, about a half a pound of sausage. And we know this is going to be way more than what we can eat. Well, we'll take some of them. Okay. 
for now, that's about it. We've got some more ingredients that don't take us long to cook. So we'll probably just go ahead and hold off on them. Put the lid on this and let this cook a little bit. So we'll be back when we get the next edition of ingredients. On this channel, we show you yummy, delicious, and interesting things to cook in cast iron, most specifically Dutch ovens. Do you know we have a cookbook? It not only shows you great tips, how to use your Dutch ovens, but it gives you our first two years of recipes. They're $20 with $6 shipping and handling. You can get those at Pole House Black Pots, P.O. Box 1 or 212, Fat Missouri 65248. Or on Venmo. Yes, in the Venmo, look at Pole House Block Pots on Venmo. All right, I'm coming over here, dear. Okay, it's been cooking about 20 minutes or a good so. Oh. oh, that's looking good. Yeah. You saying I cut a couple of them a little bit big on them butternuts, right? That's all right. They'll get done. Okay, now. <clears throat> now, Jeff, when you're doing this, you had real broccoli. When I went to go buy broccoli, it looked awful. When can, sometimes the produce department around areas is not very good. So, so we're trying this broccoli salad. They're doing a broccoli, yeah. And it's got the carrots and some other stuff in there, too. So normally we would do regular carrots, julienne, and then broccoli florets would be the best. Make it really pretty, too. Well, that broccoli looks awful. And we're doing bell pepper. We're doing some red and yellow bell pepper. Bell pepper. Get this all stirred. Now, when do you put the sesame oil in? I can do that anytime, but I can do that now. Ain't hurry, huh? Yep, we'll do that next. And a couple more ingredients, so they're gonna go around towards the closer to the end. The last little cooking. There's some yellow, purple cabbage in there too, doesn't he? Yep. Or red cabbage, whatever you want to call it. You may not like me in the morning, but I love me some cabbage. Okay, let's see here. A little bit of olive oil for a little bit of flavor. Now, now excuse me, a little bit of sesame oil. A little olive oil would have worked good instead of the vegetable oil, but we didn't have any olive oil. Now, sesame oil is pretty potent. Yeah, a little bit, a little dab will do, yeah. So, you don't want to overdo. A tablespoon will probably be plenty. We'll give that one more good stir. And we'll let these next ingredients cook a little bit and then soon as the butternut's done the butternut's pretty hard a hardy kind of like a winter yeah let's fall try. winter type of let me try one of them see how the butternut's doing mm, about okay. half maybe it's too hard oh it's got good flavor mm. lid back on all right we'll be back when we'll give her some more cook time and then we'll add the last few ingredients and then we'll finally have supper Lid off and the last couple ingredients. Looky there. Can you see it through the steam? Yeah, the cool weather. Hard to see. Oh, it smells good. Man, yeah. wish we had smell o vision okay. We just tasted a couple minutes ago the butternut, which is the hardest to get done. Butternut you kind of want good and done. It's not something very good that you have to crunch. No. So and the other things you could use is an acorn squash. Yeah, something like that would be good. You could even use squash. pumpkin okay. or sweet potato. Now, the last couple of ingredients are a little bit different. <clears throat> Sunflower nuts. Yeah, you give a little bit more than that, dear. There. Sunflower seeds. Well, they're cur sunflower kernels. Or a lot of times this is actually the nut. So, whatever. No shell. Okay. And we're doing a little bit of lemon juice for a little zip. 
a couple of tablespoons. Fresh lemon juice would be fine, but we don't have fresh lemon juice. And the last ingredient, believe it or not, got that little bit of a citrus for some And we sip. can thank Jeff for this too. We have Whole House Black Pot honey. A couple of tablespoons of honey. Thanks, Jeff, for the honey. He came and got our bees. We'll try to get some of that stirred off of there to get the uh, honey off of all that spoon. If I stir it, maybe we'll get the goody out of that spoon. We don't want to waste any of that honey. Nope. That looks pretty good. Now, last thing, we'll give it a quick little stir. Let it get back up to temp again. Yeah, it took a couple more minutes and we'll be ready for our supper. Which is good because Iris is complaining about her not having her supper yet. Leave back on, about five more minutes. We'll be ready to eat. You bringing us supper, dear? I'm bringing our supper. Mmm, smells good. Oh, yeah, mm. You can actually smell the sesame seeds. I'm sticking in behind you, huh? Okay. Mm. Looks good. I think it's going to be a lip burner, though. I got a little bit of squash and some of that and a sausage. Mmm. Just as good as I remember it, as it burns all the way down. I didn't even get any sausage. Ah, nope. Wonderful. It is. Got a little bit of that sweet from the honey. Honey. And a little zip from the I don't think lemon I got juice. any pepper in my pepper. Or the uh, sausage. Of sausage. There. There. That's awful good. So it's a great fall dish with mm. being the butternut, squash, mm. some other fall root vegetables like the uh, carrots. So yeah, if you want to try a little combination. Oh, I guess Iris thinks she needs to say hi while she's on. Yeah. While we're on camera. Well, we're not going to have her say hi. She's just talking. So, well, that about does it for this weekend. Yeah, anyway. we're going to stop it here because tomorrow we're going to try to stay another day and then uh, shoot another video for uh -huh. another fall recipe so if you like this video why don't you watch some of our others there's we've got we've been all over uh share us on facebook or instagram what else do they need to do try to subscribe we'd love to have you not subscribe. just try subscribe <laughs> yeah succeed is <laughs> All you gotta do is hit subscribe and that little bell notification will let you know when we have videos that come out. Uh, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Alright, bye everybody.